Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a cable stitch batwing sweater. Tis the season for comfy sweaters and nothing says comfort like batwing, so here we are. There's also some lovely cables, a tiny bit of texture, thanks Alpine, and a slouchy v-neck so you can wear this off the shoulder if you're so inclined. Speaking of, if you are inclined to follow the latest and greatest trends in crochet, look no further. We have hundreds of modern crochet patterns, including some awesome sweaters, with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support, so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 650 grams of yarn, and that's 1200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5.5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below, use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you prefer jam or jelly. I am a jam kind of girl myself. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using six stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. Double crochet. Double crochet, and double treble crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this sweater started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our five and a half millimeter hook and start off by making an even number chain that reaches from mid collarbone across our chest to mid collarbone. And this needs to be a minimum of 18. I need a total of six inches or 15 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 24. Now that we have our chain, our first row is going to be a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and we're gonna put one half double crochet into every chain. So yarn over, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, insert with a half double. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Once more, yarn over, in through that following chain, pull through, pull through all three and continue putting one half double crochet into every chain. Our row one is finished. Now we're gonna do our row two, which is going to be another half double crochet row. So we're going to chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. Our first two rows are now finished. Now let's get started on our row three or our first cable stitch row. So let's all start with a chain two and flip our work. Now our first and last cable is going to be the same for everyone no matter what size we're making. So we are all going to start with a front post treble crochet. That is going to be our dividing stitch and we're going to start working into our previous odd number row. So for every cable stitch row that we're doing, we're gonna be worked into a previous odd number row. So since we're working on row three, we're gonna be inserting our hook into our row one. So yarning over twice, preparing for a front post treble crochet, we're gonna find that first half double crochet from row one, making sure that we're not counting that chain two. So we're gonna bring our hook underneath the body of that first half double crochet, and then bring our hook through the other side. From there, we're gonna yarn over and pull through then yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. 
That is how we do a front post treble crochet and our first stitch for our row three cable. Now getting started on the actual cable stitch section, we're gonna start with a front post double treble crochet. So now we're gonna yarn over three times. So here's one, two, and three. Now from here, we're going to skip the following two half double crochets from our row one, because remember we're working into our previous odd number row. And then underneath that following half double crochet, we're gonna insert our hook and do a front post double treble crochet. So we're going to skip one, skip two, and insert our hook underneath that third half double crochet, bring our hook through the other side. From here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through and just like our front post treble crochet, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. That is our first front post double treble crochet. And for the cable stitch detail, we're gonna be worked in sets of two. So since we have one front post double treble crochet finished, we're gonna be putting one more front post double treble crochet into that following stitch. So again, yarn over one, two, three times. Finding that next half double crochet from our previous odd number row, we're gonna insert our hook underneath that stitch, through the other side, pull through. And from here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook again. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now from here, we're gonna have to work on the twist portion of our cable. So we're now gonna be working into those two stitches that we skipped. And that's gonna be one front post double treble crochet into each. So yarn over one, two, three times. We're going to bring our hook down into that first stitch that we skipped, underneath that stitch, on the other side, pull through, and then pull through two, two, two and two, and then we should have one more skip stitch. We're gonna do one more front post double treble crochet into there, cause like I said, they're worked in sets of two. So yarn over one, two, three, into that last skip stitch, bring our hook through the other side, pull through. Pull through two, 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 and two. Now the twist portion for this first cable is finished. Now we're gonna finish up this cable with two front post treble crochets. So yarn over one and two times. Into that following stitch from our row one, bring your hook underneath that following, half double and pull through. Pull through two, 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 and they're worked in sets of two like I said, so one more into the following. So yarn over twice, underneath that next half double through the other side and pull through. Pull through two, two, two. Now the cable stitch portion is all finished and we're going to frame our cable stitch portion with our dividing stitches. Since we started this off with a front post treble, we're also going to finish off this cable stitch section with a front post treble as well. So yarn over twice, and then just into that following stitch, bring our hook through the other side, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Now the first cable for our row three is finished. Now in between our cables, we're going to be doing our alpine stitches. So we are all gonna start by skipping eight stitches from the top of our row two. We're skipping eight stitches because we just did eight stitches here for our cable stitch detail. So counting this out together, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Into that ninth stitch, we're gonna insert with one half double crochet. So yarn over and into the top of that ninth stitch, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, and our alpine stitch detail is a half double and front post double crochet alternating between those two stitches. So now to do our front post double crochet, we're going to yarn over once. We're gonna find that following stitch from our row one, and now we're gonna do a front post double crochet. So what we're gonna do, taking a look at our row one, we are not gonna be inserting our hook into that following half double crochet because this half double crochet that we did counts as that stitch. So we're gonna skip this one, and then into the following, insert with a front post double. So bring our hook down, skip that one, and then insert your hook into the following, yarn over, and pull through. Now the only difference with our front post double crochets is once we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall so that we get the same height as all of our other stitches. And then we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two, and that is our front post double crochet. And this is also one alpine stitch set. Let's do this again. So we're going to yarn over, skip that following stitch from our previous row because this front post double crochet counts as that stitch, and then into that following insert with a half double, and then a front post double crochet. So yarn over. Now taking a look at our row one, we're going to skip that following half double crochet because that half double crochet counts as the one that we just did. And then underneath the following, insert with a front post double. So insert, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. And that is our second alpine stitch set. We're gonna continue to repeat our sets until we have a total of eight stitches left. So let's do another alpine stitch set together. So our following stitch is going to be a half double crochet, so yarn over. Skip that following stitch from our previous row, and then into the following, insert with a half double. And then to do our front post double, yarn over. Skip that next stitch into our row one, and then underneath the following, insert, pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two. And I actually know that I have one more set left to do, so I'm going to do one more set with you, and then we'll get started on our cable. So yarn over, skip that following stitch into the following, a half double, yarn over, skip that next stitch from our row one, and then into the stitch right after that, insert with a front post double, so pull through, pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two, and I have a total of four alpine stitch sets all finished. And I should have a total of eight stitches left to get started on my cable. For those of you that have more stitches left, Continue to do our half double and front post double until you have eight stitches left. But when you do, just to double check, we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That eighth stitch should be right next to our last front post double crochet, right after our alpine stitch section. Now getting started on our second cable stitch section for our row three, it's going to be framed with front post treble crochets as well. So yarn over twice, and into that following stitch from our row one, we're going to insert our hook, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And getting started with our second cable stitch section, it's actually going to mirror this first cable stitch section that we did here. So to get started on this, we're going to start with a set of two front post treble crochets just into the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, into that next stitch, insert your hook, pull through and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. There's our first front post treble crochet, one more into the following, so yarn over, insert, pull through, pull through two, two, two. And from here, we're now gonna have to do a set of two front post double treble crochets. So yarn over one, two, three times. We're now going to skip over those following two stitches, so we're gonna skip one, Skip two, and then underneath that following from our row one, insert with one, front post, double treble crochet. And like I said, they're all worked in sets of two, so we're gonna do one more into that following stitch. And just to make sure that we're all on the same page, we should have just one stitch left over, but we'll work into that after a couple more stitches. Now from here, we need to work on the twist portion of this cable. So we're now gonna be working into those skip stitches that we skipped over, but now in through that window that we just created. So let's all start with another set of two front post double treble crochet. So yarn over three times. So here's one, two, and three. Now since we're gonna be working in through that window, we're going to want to hang on to our yarn because it can very easily fall off. And what we're gonna do is pull our hook down towards us, finding those two skip stitches in through that window. So we're gonna pull down and find our two skip stitches. Here's my first, here's my second. We're gonna start by inserting our hook into that first skip stitch. So bring our hook back, it may feel a little awkward. But find that first skip stitch and front post double treble crochet per usual. So just continue to pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. And that is what our twist should be looking like. Let's do one more. Yarn over three times, bring our work down and into that last skip stitch that we should have, this is mine right here. We're going to insert our hook, bring it through the other side, pull through, pull through two, 
two, two, and two. Now we're going to close off this cable with a front post treble crochet, but this last one is always going to be combined with a half double crochet just to secure this entire row down. So to do this together, we're going to start with a yarn over of two. We're gonna find that last stitch from our row one, which this is mine right here. Bring your hook down through the other side and pull through. Now we're gonna to continue to yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And when we have those two loops, we're going to yarn over. And then we're going to insert our hook into the top of that last stitch from our previous row to connect this row down. And together we're gonna to yarn over, pull through. And when we have those four loops on our hook, just yarn over. Pull through all four of those loops, and now the entirety of our row three is finished. Now every even number row for our cable stitch detail is going to be a half double crochet row. So from here, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch. Our half double crochet row is finished, and now we should all have one, two, three, four rows. Now let's get started on our row five or our second cable stitch row. We're all gonna chain two and flip our work. Now when it comes to doing our cables, like I said, we're always going to frame our cables with a front post treble crochet. So we're all going to yarn over twice, and then we're going to find that first front post treble crochet from our previous odd number row. So since we're working on row five, we're gonna find that stitch from our row three. We're gonna bring our hook down and underneath that front post treble, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, two, two. Our dividing stitch for our row five is finished. Now getting started on the first cable for our row five. Fun fact, this is going to be a repeat of our row three's second cable. We're gonna start with a set of two front post treble crochets, one into each of the following two stitches. So yarn over twice, Find that following stitch from our row three, bring our hook underneath, pull through, pull through two, two, two. There we go. And then one more into that following stitch, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Now we're going to get started on our twist. We're gonna do a set of two front post double treble crochets, skipping over this following two stitches and into the two stitches right after that. So start with yarn over of one, two, three, we're gonna skip one, skip two, into that following stitch with our first front post double treble crochet, and then into that following another front post double treble crochet. And now that we have that, we're going to start working on our twist. So we're going to yarn over, three times, and now we're gonna be working into those two stitches that we skipped, but now into that window that we just made. So hang on to your working yarn, bring our hook down, and we're gonna find our two skip stitches. Here's one, here's two. Inserting your hook into that first skipped stitch, pull through, pull through, two, 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 two. There's the first portion of our twist, and we have to do one more because we still have one more skipped stitch. So yarn over three times, hang on to our working yarn and bring our hook down. This is my skip stitch right over here. Bring your hook underneath, pull through, and pull through two, 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 and two. Now this is our first cable for our row five finished. We're going to need to frame it with a front post treble crochet or our dividing stitch. So from here, yarn over twice. Into that following stitch, insert, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And now our cable for our row five is finished. Now working on our alpine stitch details, each of our stitches need to be staggered from the previous odd number row. So as an example, our first stitch from our previous alpine stitch section started with a half double crochet. So now we're gonna be inserting a front post double crochet into there and then over that following front post double crochet from our previous odd number row, a half double crochet will be worked on top of that. So getting this started, 
We're going to yarn over, finding the first half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch section. Bring our hook down and into that first half double. Pull through. We're going to pull up nice and tall again. Pull through two. Pull through two. Now that's the first stitch for this alpine stitch detail, and our following is going to be a half double crochet. So let's all start by counting out nine stitches from our previous row because we just did a total of nine stitches here. So all together, we're going to be skipping nine. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Into that tenth stitch, we're going to insert with a half double crochet. Now let's do this again. We're going to yarn over. Find the following half double crochet from our previous alpine stitch section. Bring our hook underneath, through the other side, and pull through. Pull up nice and tall, pull through two, and pull through two, and then a half double crochet as well. Yarn over, skip that following stitch from our previous row, and then into that next, a half double crochet. Now from here for this row, we're gonna be continuing to repeat our front post double and half double crochet until we have the same amount of sets for our previous alpine stitch detail. So just to count my knot together, I had a total of one, two, three, four sets. So for this row and onward, I'll be having four alpine stitch sets. So I just did two. Let's just do the following two together really quickly. So yarn over, find the next half double crochet from our previous alpine detail, pull through, pull up tall, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, skip a stitch into the following, with a half double, and that's three sets. Let's do my last one together. Yarn over into that following half double, insert with a front post double, and then I'm going to be finishing off my alpine stitch detail with a half double. If you have more stitches to do for your alpine stitch detail, continue to do that until we have reached our last stitch and are ready to work on the second cable for row five. But getting started on the second cable for row five, we're going to be framing this with front post treble crochets as well. So yarn over twice and find that front post treble crochet from our previous row. Insert your hook underneath that stitch, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And another fun fact, our row five's second cable is going to be repeat of row three's first cable. So as a refresher, we're going to start, but with a yarn over of three, preparing for a front post double treble crochet. We're gonna skip the following two stitches, and then into that next, insert your hook, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then another front post double treble crochet into that following stitch, insert, pull through, pull through two, 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 and two. Now I need to work on the twist, so one front post double treble crochet into those two skip stitches that we skipped over. So yarn over three times, find that first stitch from our previous row, insert, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then one more into that following skipped stitch. Now that our twist is finished, we're gonna have to close off this cable set with one front post treble crochet into each of the following two stitches to finish up this cable. So there is one front post treble, and then there is my next front post treble. And now to finish off the entirety of our row five, like I said, our last stitch is going to be a front post treble crochet to frame our cable, but also combined with a half double crochet. So to get that started, we're gonna yarn over twice. Finding the last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert our hook, and pull through. We're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. And when we do, we're going to yarn over and insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through. And when we have those four loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all four, and our row five is finished. Like I said, each of our even number rows is gonna be a half double crochet row, so chain two, Flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every stitch. Our half double crochet row is finished and we should all together have one, two, three, four, five, and six rows. To get started on our following row, we're going to chain two, 
and flip our work. Now from here, it's going to be repeat of rows three through six until we get the height of this piece that we need. So placing this first row right where we want the bottom band to be, working our way all the way up until we reach the depth of where we want the collar to be. So you can make this cropped, long, or a dress. So I'm just gonna get started on the following row with you, and then I'll meet you back when we have the entirety of the cable stitch detail finished. Now that we've chained two and flipped our work, just to get started on our row seven, we're going to start with our dividing stitch. So yarn over twice. Find that first stitch from our previous odd number row, which is going to be our row five. Insert underneath, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Our row seven is going to be a repeat of our row three. So getting this started, we're gonna start with a set of two front post double treble crochets. So yarn over twice, skip those first two stitches, and into the stitch right after that, our first front post double treble crochet, and then our following front post double treble crochet. Once we have this cable stitch detail finished, don't forget our dividing stitch and then our alpine stitch detail. And that's basically it. If you need timestamps on how to do any of these rows, they will be linked within the description. And I will meet you back right after an even number row, right before we're about to get started on a repeat of our row three. I am back with my cable stitch detail. I have a total of 42 rows and my height is 15 inches or 38 centimeters. Now let's get started on our right neckline. Now we're all gonna start by inserting our stitch markers into our two middle stitches. We should all have two since we all made an even number chain when we got started with our cable stitch detail. My two middle stitches are my 12th and my 13th stitch, so I've inserted my stitch markers into there. And now we're gonna get started on our cable stitch detail. So we're all gonna start with a chain two and flip our work. And the following row that we're about to do should be a repeat of our row three's first cable. So get that first cable from dividing stitch to dividing stitch finished up, and then I'll meet you back right before we get started on our alpine stitch detail. Our cable stitch detail is finished. Now we're gonna get started on our alpine stitch detail the same way that we've been doing this entire time until we are one stitch left right before our stitch marker stitch. So just to do the first set together, we're gonna yarn over, skip eight stitches from our previous row, and then into the ninth insert with a half double crochet. Next is a front post double crochet, so into that following half double from our previous row. Pull through, pull up nice and tall, pull through two, pull through two, and continue doing our half double and front post double until we are one stitch right before our stitch marker stitch. Now I am technically done just after one set. Taking a look at my previous row, I have one available stitch, and that counts as this front post double crochet, and then this stitch right here, and then our stitch marker stitch. We're going to need to start to form our V-neck, so we're now going to do a decrease of two half double crochets, working into that stitch right before our stitch marker stitch, and then that middle stitch as well. So we're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, pull through, into that middle stitch that we have, and pull through. Now all together we should have one, two, three, four loops. Yarn over and pull through all four of those loops. We're going to need to decrease into our half double crochet row as well. So we're going to chain two and flip our work. Now that our work is slipped, we're gonna start all of our half double crochet rows off with a decrease of two half doubles. So yarn over into that last stitch from our previous row, pull through into that following stitch, pull through, pull through all four, and we're going to put one half double crochet into every stitch. And the amount of half double crochets that we're doing should be an odd number, but we are not counting that decrease. So just as an example of what I just said, I said that we should have an odd number of half double crochets, not counting that decrease. So this is my decrease, I'm not gonna count that, but I, which everyone's numbers should be different, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's an odd number. That is the amount of stitches that I need. So now let's get started on the following row. So we're gonna chain two and flip our work. 
Now we're going to get started with the following row by doing a repeat of our row 5's first cable. Now our cable stitch detail is finished. From here, we're going to continue on with a repeat of row 5's alpine stitch detail until we're just about to work into our last front post double crochet that we have to do. Now I'm actually already there, so let's do our last front post double crochet together. We do need to decrease into every row, and how we're going to decrease when the end of our row is a front post double crochet is we're going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into our half double crochet from our previous alpine row, yarn over, pull through. We're going to combine this front post double crochet with a half double crochet, so when we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall, just like a regular front post double, yarn over, pull through two. And from here, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four loops. And that is how we combine our front post double crochet with a half double crochet, and that also counts as a decrease. Now from here, we're going to continue to repeat our three previous rows. So as a refresher, a repeat of row three's first cable, and then when we do that alpine stitch section, we should end on a decrease of two half double crochets. Our following row is going to be a half double crochet row that starts with a decrease of two, and after that we should have an odd number of stitches. And then the row right after that should be a repeat of row five's first cable, and that row should always end on a front post double crochet combined with a half double crochet. We're going to continue to repeat those three rows until our half double crochet row starts with a decrease of two half double crochets, and then we have seven half double crochets after that. That's the easiest way to describe it since we all have a different amount of rows, but once we have that, I will meet you back. And that's actually my following row, so I'm going to get that done, and then we can start doing the rest of our cable decrease from there. So we are back. And our last row that we should have done should have been a half double crochet row. Just to make sure that we're all on the same row, we should have had our decrease of two half double crochets and then seven half double crochets right after that. So let's count all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven half double crochets. Now from here on out, our cable stitch decrease is going to be the same for everyone. So do a chain two and flip your work. Now to get started on the following row, we're now going to repeat row three's first cable, but without the last stitch. So we should have a total of six stitches and then I'll meet you back to do our decrease. So I'm nearly done with this row's cable. Like I said, we should have all had a total of six stitches. So that is our dividing stitch, that's one. There's two, three, four, five, and six. So we did not do the last front post double crochet, nor did we do the dividing stitch. Now we're going to have to combine the last stitch that we have with a half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over twice, which is going to be a front post treble crochet. And then we're going to insert our hook in through that last stitch into our cable, not into the dividing stitch. Pull through. And we're going to continue to pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So pull through two, pull through two. From here, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, pull through all four. Now that is how we do our first decrease into the cable. Our following row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, start with a decrease of two half double crochets, and after that we should all have five half double crochets right after the decrease. Our half double crochet row is finished, like I said, decrease of two half doubles, then one, two, three, four, five half doubles, now let's chain two and flip our work. Now we're gonna start with our front post treble crochet again. So our dividing stitch, insert, with our first front post treble. And per usual, we're gonna do two front post treble crochets into the following two stitches, just like as if we were repeating row five's first cable. So yarn over twice, into that first stitch with one front post treble, into that following with our second front post treble. Now we should all have a total of three front post treble crochets. And right after that, we're going to skip the following two stitches and then do a front post double treble crochet into the following. So pretty much per usual. Yarn over three times, we're gonna skip one, skip two, and into the following with one front post double treble crochet. 
And now from here, we're going to do a front post double treble crochet, working underneath that window that we just made for ourselves. And since that will be our last stitch, we're gonna combine it with a half double crochet. And then lastly, we're gonna be doing a decrease with it as well. It sounds really scary, but I promise you it's super simple. So we're all gonna start with a yarn over of three. So the same way that we'd start any double treble crochet. From here, we're gonna hang on to our working yarn and bring our hook down, finding those two skip stitches in through that window. Here's my first, here's my second. Now what we would typically do is just insert our hook underneath that first stitch, but to do the decrease, to make sure that we don't have a stitch that's left out, we're just gonna insert our hook underneath both of those skip stitches. So that's the decrease portion of this. So we're gonna bring our hook underneath that first skip stitch, and then also underneath that second skip stitch. And then now we're going to yarn over, pull through. And remember this does need to be combined with a half double crochet as well. So yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. When we have those two loops, yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, pull through all four loops on our hook. Now this decrease row is finished. Our following row is going to be a half double crochet row, so chain two, flip your work, start with a decrease of two half double crochets, then after that we should all have three half double crochets. Our half double crochet row is finished, and like I said, we should have a decrease of two half double crochets, and then one, two, three half double crochets right after that. So chain two and flip your work. Now we're going to start this row off with another front post treble crochet. That is our dividing stitch, so yarn over twice. And through that stitch with our first front post treble. And from here, we're going to skip the two following stitches and then put one front post double treble crochet into the following. So right after our first dividing stitch, yarn over three times, we're gonna skip one, skip two, and then into that following stitch, one front post double treble crochet. And then right after that, we're going to have to do another decrease of two front post double treble crochets combined with a half double crochet. It is a mouthful and it sounds scary, but it's exactly the same thing that we did for the previous row. So let's do this together. We're all gonna start with a yarn over of one with two with three. We are gonna be working in through this window again. So we're going to bring our work down finding those two skip stitches. Here's my first, here's my second. We're gonna be inserting our hook underneath both of those skip stitches. That is where the decrease comes in. So underneath the first and underneath that second skip stitch and pull through. From here, we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. And now we're gonna combine it with a half double. So yarn over, inserting your hook in through the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, pull through all four of those loops. And the following row is another half double crochet row. So chain two, flip our work, start with a decrease of two half doubles, and then we should have just one half double crochet after that. And now that that half double crochet row is finished, let's do the last row in this cable stitch detail. So chain two and flip our work. And this last cable stitch row is going to be another decrease of two front post double treble crochets combined with a half double. So let's do this together. We're going to yarn over three times and we're gonna bring our hook down underneath that first front post treble, which is that dividing stitch, and then underneath that following stitch that we have as well. And from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, through the next two, and then from here we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through, pull through all four, and this is our last row, so from here we're going to chain one and cut. So now that the first half of our neckline is finished, let's get started on the left side. So we're gonna start by inserting our same hook into that following middle stitch marker stitch that we have. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through. Now, since we're starting along this side, we're gonna start with a chain two, but that doesn't count as a stitch. And we're getting started with our alpine stitch detail first. So we're all gonna start by doing a front post double crochet that is combined with a half double crochet that is going to count as our decrease. So let's all yarn over 
and then we're going to find that following half double crochet that we have. Now that middle stitch marker stitch should be right on top of a front post double crochet, so taking a look at the left, into that next stitch should be a half double crochet. All we're going to do is insert our hook underneath that half double, yarn over, pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to pull up nice and tall, yarn over, and pull through two. When we have these two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, and then insert our hook into that next stitch that we have that's right next to our stitch marker stitch, or that stitch that has our chain two into it. So just into that next available stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. And now we're going to finish off our alpine stitch detail. So for me, I have one half double crochet and one more double crochet to do. If you have more stitches than I do for your alpine stitch detail, continue on with our alpine stitch detail starting with a half double crochet until we're ready to do our cable. So just to do the first set together, we're going to yarn over and inserting our hook directly into that next stitch that we have from our previous row because that's right on top of that front post double crochet. Insert with a half double crochet. And then since I have one more stitch left, one front post double crochet into that next half double crochet. For those of you that have more stitches, I'll meet you back when we're ready to do our cable stitch detail. And once we get there, we're going to do a repeat of row three's second cable. Now we have just finished up our repeat of row three's second cable, remembering that that ends with a front post treble crochet combined with a half double. And now we're going to do our following half double crochet row. So now since we're along the outer edge, we're going to chain two, flip our work, and now we're going to put one half double crochet into every stitch and then do a decrease of two into the last two. So yarn over, find that first stitch and insert with a half double. And just like how the other side of our neckline was done, for the half double crochets, not counting our decrease, we should have an odd number of stitches. Now that we have just two stitches left, right after our half double crochets, we're going to do a decrease of two half double crochets. And just to double check, counting our half double crochets, not counting that decrease, we should have an odd number. And for those of you that have my numbers, I have a total of nine half double crochets right here. Getting started on our following cable stitch detail, we're going to chain two and flip your work. Now getting started on this alpine stitch detail, we're going to start with a decrease of two half double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, pull through all four, and then continue to do your alpine stitch detail until you're ready to do your cable stitch section. I'm actually all done with my alpine detail right after that decrease of two. So right now I'm going to do a repeat of row five's second cable. Our cable stitch detail is all finished. From here, we're going to continue to repeat our three previous rows until our following half double crochet row is seven half double crochet and ends with a decrease of two half double crochet. So pretty much the same row that we needed to meet back for the other side. Now that following half double crochet row is my next row. So I'm going to get that following row done. And then right after that, everyone's instructions will be exactly the same. So our last half double crochet row is finished and now we're going to do our decrease for our cable stitch detail together. We should all have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half double crochets and then our decrease. So to get started on our cable stitch detail, we're all going to chain two and flip our work. Now we're all going to start with a decrease of two front post treble crochets and that is going to be a decrease into our dividing stitch and into that first stitch for our cable stitch detail. So we're going to yarn over twice and we're going to be inserting our hook underneath that cable stitch detail and then also underneath that following stitch. And then from here, we're going to finish off our treble crochet per usual. So yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And right after that decrease, we're going to do one more front post treble crochet into that following stitch so we don't forget it. So yarn over twice into that stitch, pull through, pull through two, two, two. And then we're going to finish off this cable stitch detail per usual. So yarn over three times, skip over the following two stitches, and put one front post double treble crochet into each of those. And 
And now that we have those two front post double treble crochets, we're going to do two more front post double treble crochets, working underneath into that window that we just made. So yarn over three times, bring our work down, and then one front post double treble crochet into each of those stitches. We're going to close this off with a front post treble crochet combined with a half double. Now everyone's following half double crochet row is going to be a chain two, flip our work, and then five half double crochets that ends on a decrease of two. So my five half double crochet and then a decrease is finished. So chain two and flip your work. And now to start this following row, we're gonna start with a decrease of two front post treble crochets. So yarn over twice. Inserting your hook underneath that dividing stitch and into the stitch right after that, we're going to do a regular front post treble crochet. Next, we're gonna skip the two following stitches and do a front post double treble crochet into each of those following two stitches. And right after that set, we're now going to do a decrease of two front post treble crochets, working in through that window that we just made. So yarn over three times. We're going to bring our work down, and then we're gonna insert our hook underneath both of those stitches that we skipped. So bring our hook underneath the first and the second. Oops, that's one too many loops. And then from there, we're going to finish off our front post double treble crochet per usual, and then close this row off with a front post treble crochet combined with a half double. And that is this row. Our following half double crochet row should be three half double crochets and then a decrease of two. Now all together, we should have one, two, three half doubles, then a decrease, and to get started on our following cable row, chain two and flip our work. Now getting started on our third to last cable stitch row, we're gonna yarn over twice, and then we're going to skip the first two stitches from our previous row, and then into that next stitch, which should be this hidden stitch right over here. We're gonna insert with one front post treble crochet, and then we're going to be doing a decrease of two front post treble crochets. So yarn over twice. Into those following two stitches, go ahead and insert your hook underneath both of those, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then close this row off with a front post treble crochet combined with a half double. Right after that is our half double crochet row, so chain two, flip our work, and we will have one half double and then a decrease of two. Our last half double crochet row is finished, so let's chain two, flip our work, and do our last cable stitch row. After we flipped our work, we should just have a handful of stitches left. So you're gonna yarn over three times. We're just gonna bring our hook underneath that first front post and underneath that front post. That is actually the last stitch from our previous row that's typically combined with a half double. We're going to pull through. We're gonna yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left on our hook. And we will be combining that with a half double crochet. And that's it. We should have the same amount of rows as our other neckline portion. So from here, all we're gonna do is do a chain up of one and cut. So the neckline for our cable stitch detail is finished. Now we're going to finish up our neckline and our shoulder, all with back loop half double crochets. And as you can see, I've already gotten one side all finished up. So let's get started on the second one together because you're gonna be done the exact same way. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our cable stitch detail. Now that our hook is in through the bottom corner, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. From here, we're gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way up, starting with one single crochet. So let's all start by finding our first side row that we have right over here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop. Now we should have some tail ends as well, so go ahead and place that over your hook to weave them in as we go and then we're gonna single crochet per usual. Now let's do the next one. This is my following side row right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop now with two single crochets. So there is one, and then into that same top loop, another one for my second single crochet. And then that's it, let's do that again. This is my following side row right over here. Find that top loop, insert with a single crochet, and then into my following side row, insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. And we're gonna continue this until we reach the end of the row. 
My single crochet row is finished. Now we're going to do a half double crochet row. Since we're along the top, we're going to be doing an increase of three half double crochets because we still need this portion to reach all the way up to the top of our shoulder. So at the end of our single crochet row, chain two and flip your work. Now that our work is slipped, we're going to yarn over. Finding the last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert with three half double crochets. So there is my first, my second, and my third half double crochet. And from here, continue putting one half double crochet into every stitch. So our first half double crochet row is finished. Now we're going to be doing back loop half double crochet rows with an increase of three along the top. So to get started on a row three for our side panel, we're going to chain two and flip our work. Doing the first few back loop half double crochets, we're all going to yarn over. Find the last stitch from our previous row. We're going to insert our hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us and half double crochet per usual. Let's do that again. Yarn over, finding that following stitch, in through that stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through three, and that's it. Continue with one back loop half double crochet into every stitch until we have one left. We've made our way down, putting one back loop half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one. And now we're gonna do another increase of three half double crochets. So into that last back loop, we're gonna insert with one half double, with two half double, and then with a third half double. And that is that. Now we're gonna get started on our following row. So we're gonna chain two and flip our work. And since we're along the top, we're gonna to start with another increase of three back loop half doubles. So into that last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with one, with two, with three half double crochets all into that same back loop, and then one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. From here, we're gonna to continue to repeat our two previous rows until this neckline that we have can reach the top of our shoulders. Now, a really quick tip that I have for you guys is that with every row that we do, our neckline is gonna get a little bit wider. We wanna make sure that this isn't getting too wide, even though we are gonna add a collar to it as well. So make sure that the point is still on the shoulders once we reach the last row. I'll meet you back when we have the width of our neckline finished up, along the top or right after an odd number row. My neckline portion is finished. Counting from my first single crochet row, I have a total of seven rows and this width is two and a half inches or six centimeters. From here, we're going to do a shoulder portion and all that's going to be is back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases until the shoulder portion is about two inches past the tip of our shoulder. So all we're gonna do is chain two, flip our work and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch and continue on with that until we get the shoulder width that we need. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. My shoulder portion for one side of my front panel is all finished. Counting from my first single crochet row, I have a total of 16 rows, and this width is roughly six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. I did do a chain up of one and cut, and when we have this portion finished up, we're going to repeat everything we did here on the other side. So as a refresher, insert your hook into the bottom of our cable stitch detail, do our single crochet row that alternates between one to two single crochet into every side row. Then we're going to do the same amount of back loop half double crochet rows with an increase of three along the top for the same amount of rows that we did for this first side and then the same amount of shoulder rows. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut. I already have my entire front panel all finished up. My total width is now 19 and a half inches or 50 centimeters. And when we have the entirety of our front panel finished, we can get started on the back. So getting started with our back panel, we're all gonna start by grabbing our same category four yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we have for our last shoulder row. For those of you that have my numbers, I had a total of 91 stitches. So now I'm about to make a chain of 91. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and we're gonna yarn over and insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook with one half double crochet. And that's it. Continue putting one half double crochet into every chain. 
And now that we have our first half double crochet row finished, all of our rows from here on out for the back panel are going to be back loop half double crochet rows. So just chain two, flip our work, and put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch with no increases and no decreases. Now the back panel is just going to be our back loop half double crochet row until we get a back panel width that is roughly the same size as our front panel. And that's basically it, super duper simple. So get the entirety of this back panel finished up and then I will meet you back when we have it finished so we can seam everything together. I am back and the width of my back panel is finished. I have a total of 43 rows and my width is roughly 19 inches or 48 centimeters and I did do a chain up of one and cut. Now we can get started with seaming everything together. So we're all gonna start by seaming our shoulders first. We're gonna wanna make sure that when we place our front panel on top of our back panel that our cable stitch portion is face down because this is going to be a single crochet seam and we want the seam to be along the inside while our cable is on the outside when we wear it. Once we have that right, once we have that, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna alternate between one to two single crochet into every side row, making sure we're working in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's get this started. Let's all start by finding our first side row within the front panel. Insert your hook into that top loop. We're gonna find that same top loop within the back panel. So finding that first row, insert into that top loop as well. And I am gonna place my tail ends over my hook because I'd like to weave in my tail ends as I go and I'm going to single crochet them together. Let's do the next side row. This is my following side row right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop, into the front panel, into the second row's top loop, into the back panel. And then I'm going to single crochet that together. And like I said, we are gonna alternate between one to two single crochets. So into that same side row, we're gonna insert with the second single crochet. And this one should be a little bit easier since both the front and the back panel should be gathered. And then we're gonna single crochet. And that's that, let's do this one more time. Finding the following side row within the front panel, find that top loop and insert. Finding the following side row within the back panel, insert into that top loop and single. That's our first one. Into the following side row, insert into that top loop within the front panel, following side row within the back panel with one single crochet, and then into that same top loop within the front and the back panel with a second single crochet. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into, into the front panel. So the last row that we should be worked should be a solid half double crochet row. And then the row right after that should have an increase. So we're gonna stop right at that corner, do a chain up of one and cut. And then we're going to repeat everything we did here on the other side. Now that our shoulders are seamed, we're ready to seam up the sides so we can get started on the sleeves. So this is going to be a bat wing sleeve. So the base of the sleeve needs to be a little bit wider. I've inserted my stitch marker into the 50th stitch from the top, and that's a total of 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And all I did was measured right about where my waist was and inserted my stitch marker. But if you don't want a bat wing sleeve that's as dramatic, feel free to bring your stitch marker up, or if you want one that has a little bit more space to it, feel free to insert your stitch marker lower. That's completely up to you. But once we have that, we're going to start with our single crochet seam, the same seam that we did for the shoulders. So we're gonna still need to make sure that our work is swept wrong side out, meaning the cables that we have is along the inside. And we're gonna insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And now I'm going to single crochet working into both the front and the back panel until I reach my stitch marker. So this one's gonna be a little bit more simple than the shoulder because we have actual stitches to work into. So let's all start by finding that first stitch into the front panel, insert our hook in through there. Find the next stitch into the back panel, insert in through there, and single crochet. Again, next stitch into the front panel, next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we reach our stitch marker. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut. And then repeat everything we did here on the other side. So getting started on our sleeve, we're all gonna make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Next, we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook, 
pull through and start with a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just need the height. And from here, we're gonna start with a half double crochet row, making our way all the way up and over. So pretty simple. We're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch with one half double crochet, and then that's it. I'll meet you back when we put one half double crochet into every stitch and then slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started off this row. Now that our first half double crochet row is finished, our following row is going to have decreases into it and we're gonna be decreasing into every other row. So to get started for the decrease, no matter what size we're making, after we slip stitch into that second chain, we're gonna chain two, flip our work, and we're gonna start by putting one half double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. And just to let you guys know, one of the stitches that we have looks like an extra stitch, but it's actually just the slip stitch that we made when we connect it into our second chain. So make sure that we're not working into that. Otherwise we won't be doing a decrease. So go ahead and yarn over, find that last stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop with a back loop half double, and I'll meet you back when we have a total of 10 back loop half doubles. All right, so I have my total of 10 back loop half double crochets, and now from here, we're gonna do a decrease of two back loop half doubles. So yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitches back loop, pull through, next stitch is back loop, pull through, pull through all four, and just for me, I like to insert my stitch marker into the top of that decrease stitch just so I know how many stitches I have going on before I need to decrease again. But that's basically it. From here, we're gonna continue to put one back loop half double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches and then another decrease, making our way all the way around. When we've made our way all the way around, if we have some extra stitches left after our last decrease, just put one back loop half double crochet into each of those stitches and then slip stitch into that second chain that we made. Then from there, chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. So we're basically just repeating our two rows that we just did. A back loop half double crochet row with no increases and no decreases, and then a back loop half double crochet row that does have decreases into it. And how we do those decreases is putting one back loop half double crochet into each of the next 10 stitches and then a decrease making our way all the way around. Until we are ready to do our cuff. Now, if your sleeve hole becomes fitted a little bit further up your arm than you'd like for your cuff to be, you can continue with back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases till you're ready to do your cuff. Then I'll meet you back. Now, I already know my sleeve length. I'm going to repeat these two rows until I have a total of 30 rows. Then I would like for my sleeve to be just a little bit longer than that, so I'm going to continue with back loop half double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases until I have a total of 37 rows. So I am back with the entirety of my sleeve. I now have a total of 37 rows, and now we can get started on our cuff. So from where we're at, we're all gonna start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. I'd like for mine to be just about three and a half inches or nine centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain 15. Now that we have our chain, we will block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off with the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Let's do this again. Into that following chain, insert your hook, yarn over, gently pull through everything, and that's it. Continue putting one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly, otherwise the following row could be a little too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now gonna connect it into the base. So into that next available stitch into the base, go ahead and insert your hook with a slip stitch. That's just to connect our row one, that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch. Now we need to work our way up to the following row, so slip stitch into that following stitch. That stitch also doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to work our way up to the following row and flip our work. And now from here, we're gonna be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So find that next stitch's back loop, gently yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. We're gonna continue this until we reach the end of the row. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base. Now that we've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, we're back at the base, and we're gonna slip stitch into the base again. So into that next stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off this row. Now, just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, 
flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. Then I'll meet you back to seam everything together. So now that I've made my way all the way around with my cuff, I don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it together. This is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so let's make sure the work is slipped right side out. Then we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel, and we're going to insert a hook only in through that front loop. We're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel, and insert our hook only in through that back loop. Then yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch's front loop, into the front panel, into that following stitches back loop within the back panel, and yarn over, pull through everything, and then that's it. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way down when we don't have any more stitches left to a chain up of one and cut. Then we're going to repeat everything we did here on the other side, and then I'll meet you back. So now that both of our sleeves and cuffs are finished, we're going to get started on the bottom band. So let's all start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our piece. And now we're going to start with a single crochet row. So let's all start by inserting our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row, one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way around. So just to do the first one, this is my first side row right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook with a single crochet. This is my following side row. I'm going to insert into that top loop with just one single crochet as well, and that's pretty much it. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. And a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this bottom portion can stretch. So make sure you try it on once we're finished with this row. If it's a little too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's a little too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. So our single crochet row is finished, and now we're going to make a chain the length that we'd like for the bottom band to be. I'd like for mine to be roughly three inches or eight centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain 12. Now that we have our chain, we are going to chain one, into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert your hook. When we have those two loops, yarn over and gently pull through both loops. Let's do that again into that next chain. Insert and pull through both. And continue putting one slip stitch into every chain. And a really quick tip, we want to make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row could be too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to slip stitch it into the base. So finding that next available stitch into the base, we're going to insert our hook in with a slip stitch to connect our first row. And that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, we just needed to connect it into the base. Now to work our way up to the following row, we need to slip stitch it into that next stitch as well, and we'll flip our work. Once when our work is slipped, we're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, and insert into that back loop for a back loop slip stitch. When we have those two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. We're going to continue to gently pull through, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. And then I'll meet you back at the base. We are back and our rows one, two, and three are finished, and we're going to connect it into the base just once more. We're going to find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to close off our row three. Then from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows, making our way all the way around with no increases and no decreases. So just get started on the following row together. We're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then that's it. I will meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left so you can seam our bottom band together. So we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, and now we're going to seam it together. So now we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. We are going to insert our hook into that first stitch into the front and into the back panel, yarn over, and pull through everything.
And now to do our outside loop slip stitch seam, we're gonna find that first stitch into the front panel and insert into that front loop. We're gonna find that next stitch into the back panel and insert into that back loop. And when we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop only. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop only and pull through all three. We're gonna continue this until we don't have any more stitches left, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our bottom band is seamed, the last thing we're going to do is our collar. So we're all gonna start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out and right side up. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the top of the back panel when it comes to our neckline, and then we're going to start with a single crochet row. So let's all start by inserting our yarn onto our hook. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row along the back. We will have side rows along the front panel as well, and we're gonna repeat that stitch sequence as well. So let's just do the first few here along the back. This is my first side row right here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook with a single crochet. This is my following side loop. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. And from here, we're gonna continue on with the stitch sequence until we reach our last side row right over here before we start working into our collar. So we have done our single crochets all the way up until we reached our last side row for the back panel. I did twist my work around, so now I'm looking at the front panel. And into that following side row, we're gonna start with one single crochet and then work our way down. I just wanted to meet you guys back because at every corner that we have, so this corner, the depth of our V-neck, and then the other corner on the other side, we're gonna be inserting our stitch markers. So let's all start by finding the first side row into the front panel, insert, starting with a single crochet, and then into those two stitches, so the last stitch into the back panel, and the first stitch into the front panel, we're gonna insert a stitch marker into each of those stitches. And once we have the stitch markers into place, we're gonna continue alternating between one to two single crochets, making our way all the way down until we reach the depth of our collar. So I've made my single crochet row all the way down and I have worked my way into my last side row that I have along this side of my collar. I'm gonna insert a stitch marker into that first stitch. And then I'm gonna find that first side row along this side and then insert a stitch marker into there as well. So insert your first single crochet into that first side row for this side of our collar. Insert a stitch marker into there and then continue to alternate between one to two single crochets, making my way all the way up. And then once we reach this last side row, we're gonna insert a stitch marker into that last stitch and then into that following first stitch when we work into the back panel, just like how we did along this side. Continue this all the way down and then slip stitch into that chain space and then I will meet you back. So we've just made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, and now our following row is going to be a half double crochet row. So right after we slip stitch into that chain space, let's chain two and flip our work. So all we're gonna do for our row two is put one half double crochet into every stitch, but whenever we reach our two stitch markers, we're gonna do a decrease of two into those two stitches. So just to do the first half double crochet together, we're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into that first loop with one half double crochet, and from here, continue putting one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach our stitch markers. So whenever we reach our stitch marker, all we're gonna do is a decrease of two into each of those stitches. So I'm gonna take out both of my stitch markers for now, and let's do a decrease of two. So let's yarn over and insert your hook into that following stitch, which should have had our first stitch marker into it. Pull through and into that following stitch as well. Pull through, pull through all four, and go ahead and insert your stitch marker into the top of that stitch that we just made. And from here, we're gonna continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch while maintaining a decrease of two at every set of stitch markers that we meet. And be sure to insert your stitch marker into the top of that decrease as well. Continue this, making your way all the way around, and when we don't have any more stitches left, slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started off this row. So now that our half double crochet row is finished, 
We did slip stitch into that second chain that we made when we started this row, and we did do a chain up a one and cut. Now we're gonna get started on the ribbing for our collar. So since everyone's numbers are gonna be a little bit different, this is the way that I figured that everyone's numbers can be as close as possible. So let's all start by making sure that our work is slipped right side out, right side up, and we're all going to insert our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to that middle stitch marker stitch to the right. We are now going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain two. Now that chain two does not count as a stitch, we just need the height. And into the stitch to the right of the middle stitch marker, into the stitch marker stitch, and then into the stitch to the left of that middle stitch, we're gonna be doing a decrease of three post crochets. So how that's gonna work is we're going to do a back post, front post, and back post, double crochet, but all combined. So let's do this together. We're all gonna start with the yarn over. We're gonna take a look at that stitch that we have that's to the right of our middle stitch. That middle stitch is our decrease. And then we're gonna start as if we're doing a back post double crochet. So we're gonna bring our hook underneath our work and then underneath that half double crochet that we have that's to the right of our middle stitch. We're gonna bring our hook over the body of that half double crochet and through the other side, yarn over, pull through to get a total of three loops on our hook. And then from here, we're just gonna yarn over, pull through the first two loops for two loops on our hook. Now into that middle stitch, we're gonna be doing a front post double crochet. So yarn over, we're gonna bring our hook down and then underneath the body of that middle stitch, which is our decrease, we're gonna bring our hook under through the other side. We're going to yarn over and pull through for four loops on our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two for three loops on our hook. And then into the stitch to the left of our middle stitch, we're gonna do a back post double. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath the body of our work, over the body of that following half double crochet, and through the other side. We're gonna yarn over, pull through for a total of five loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops to get four loops on our hook. When we have all four loops, we're going to yarn over and pull through all four. That is our decrease post crochet. We're doing it that way because we want to make sure that that middle stitch that we have is going to be a front post double crochet. And we also need to do a decrease. And I'm gonna insert my stitch marker into the top of that stitch that I made as well. And from here, we're gonna continue working our way up the side of our neckline. And we're gonna start with a front post double crochet. So let's all yarn over. Find that next available half double crochet. We're gonna bring our hook down underneath the body of that half double through the other side. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. That's a front post double crochet. Now let's do a back post. We're gonna yarn over. Now bring our hook underneath our work, over that following half double crochet and through the other side. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And we're gonna repeat our front and back post double crochets, making our way all the way down until we are one stitch right before our stitch marker stitch. So let's just do one more set together. Preparing for a front post double crochet, we're all gonna yarn over. Bring our hook underneath that following half double crochet through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Then we're gonna yarn over, bring our hook underneath our work now, over that next half double crochet, through the other side, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now continue this until we are one stitch right before our next stitch marker. So I've just done our front and back post double crochets working our way all the way up. We have stopped just one stitch right before our stitch marker stitch. And now we're gonna do a decrease of three half double crochets into the stitch before, into the middle, and into the stitch right after that middle stitch. Right before we get started, we wanna make sure that we're remembering this last stitch that we do because this last stitch is going to be the first stitch that we do on the other side where our stitch marker is just so that we make sure that we end on the same stitch working our way all the way back down. So mine is a front post double crochet, so I will be keeping that in mind. Now getting started on our decrease of three, we're gonna yarn over. Insert your hook into that following stitch, so the stitch right before our stitch marker stitch, and pull through into that stitch marker stitch. I'm gonna take my stitch marker out for now. 
pull through, and then into the stitch right after that, pull through. From there, we're going to yarn over and pull through all five. And then insert our stitch marker into the top of that decrease. Now working along the back, just like how we worked our way up the side of the collar, we're going to do a front post double crochet and a back post double crochet, making our way all the way down until we are one stitch right before this stitch marker over here. So just getting started on our first front post double crochet, working into the back, we're going to be inserting our hook underneath, not that first half double crochet after that decrease or our middle stitch, but into the stitch right after that. We're not working into the top of that first half double crochet because we already have something working into there. So underneath that second half double crochet, we're going to insert with a front post double. Right after that is a back post double, and then that's it. I'll meet you back once we reach our stitch marker stitch. So we have done our front and back post double crochets working our way across the back panel. And now we have stopped just one stitch right before our middle stitch. Now into that stitch before the middle stitch, the middle stitch, and the stitch right after. We're now going to do a decrease of three half double crochets like how we did on the other side. So I'm going to take out my middle stitch marker for now, yarn over, and insert our hook into that following stitch, pull through into the stitch right after that, which should have been our stitch marker stitch, pull through, and the stitch after that as well, pull through. We're going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops, and that is our decrease of three half double crochets, and don't forget, insert your stitch marker back into the top of that stitch. Now from here, we're going to do our front and back post double crochets, making our way all the way down until we reach the middle. Now the following stitch that we're about to get started with could be a little bit different for everyone. It all depends on the last stitch that we did right before we did the decrease of three half double crochets on this side. I mentioned to make a note of that last stitch that we did. The last stitch that I did was a front post double crochet. So over here, I will be starting with a front post double crochet. If you started with a back post double crochet, you will be doing a back post. But either way, we're going to continue on with that, making our way all the way down. When we don't have any more stitches left, I will meet you back. I've made my way all the way down with my front and back post double crochets, slip stitched into that second chain, and now our row three is finished. Now getting started on row four, it's going to be the same idea, but it's going to start off a little bit differently. So since we have slip stitched into that second chain that we made when we started our previous row, we're now going to chain two. And what we're going to do from here is start with another decrease of three post stitches, but now we're going to be working in through front posts only. So we're all going to yarn over. We're going to find that last front post double crochet that we just did that finished off our row three, insert our hook underneath, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two. Next, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that middle stitch, underneath that post, pull through, pull through two for a total of three loops on our hook, and then into that following front post double crochets. So making sure that we're not working in through that back post. We're going to yarn over into that next front post double crochet, insert your hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops for a total of four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four loops. And then from here, we're going to continue to do our front and back post double crochets, but we're now going to extend our previous row stitches to make it look like some really nice ribbing. So our following stitch should be a back post double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook underneath that back post double crochet with another back post double crochet. And then just to show you the next one, we're going to yarn over, find that following front post double crochet, insert into that front post with another front post double crochet. And that's it, we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way up until we are one stitch right before this following stitch marker stitch. So we've made our way all the way up with our front and back post double crochet stitches, leaving one stitch right before that middle stitch, and we're going to do another decrease of three half double crochets. You're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that stitch right before our stitch marker, pull through into that stitch marker stitch, pull through, and then into the stitch after that stitch marker stitch, and pull through. I'm going to take out my stitch marker for now, yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and then insert my stitch marker into the top of that decrease. And now we're going to work across our back panel, extending our previous row stitches. So let's flip our work and get started on the first few. Now the following stitch that we have is this front post double crochet. We're going to skip that first stitch, 
because our half double crochet is worked on top of that stitch and work into our following stitch, which should be a back post double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook underneath that back post double crochet to extend that stitch with another back post, just like that. And then to do the following stitch is a front post double crochet. So we're gonna do a front post double crochet into there. And we're gonna continue this until we are one stitch right before our stitch marker stitch along the other side. I have just worked my way across my back. I have stopped one stitch right before my stitch marker. And we're going to do a decrease of three half double crochets into there. So I'm gonna take out this stitch marker stitch for now and insert, pull through into that stitch marker stitch, pull through and into that following stitch, pull through, pull through all five. And now we're gonna insert a stitch marker into the top of that stitch and then work our way down the front of our collar. And same rules apply, working our way back down, we're gonna be extending our previous rows, double crochets. And we're all gonna start by skipping that first stitch right after our previous rows decrease. So for me, it was a front post double crochet, so I'm gonna skip that stitch because the top of that stitch is being taken up by that decrease. And then I'm going to work into that following stitch, which for me is a back post double crochet. And I'm gonna continue alternating between a front and back post double crochet until we don't have any more stitches left, and then slip stitch into that second chain. So I am back and I have just finished up my fourth row for my collar and I am all done. Now, last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!